Good morning, YouTube. Okay, so today I wanted to talk about the five things that you probably should never do in a kayak. I got my coffee here, and I wanted to walk you through days that are calm like this to days that it can end like this. There you go. You're almost there. Kick, kick, kick. I need to use your kayak for a minute. Kick, 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 kick. Oh, God. So in this video, I want to talk about things you probably shouldn't do, and if you do, you need to have a plan. So here we go. Alright guys, so it is a cold, rainy day here on the Gulf Coast. Can't fish, can't hunt, can't really cook anything. So we're gonna talk about the five things you probably shouldn't do in a kayak. I mean, you really shouldn't probably do these things. All right, so topic number one is guys, sharks, spiny tooth things, sharp tooth things, and things with spines. Okay, let me tell you a story, okay? It was about, it was about mm, two years ago. I had this little catfish on the hook and he was, I mean, he was literally like this big. And I thought it was going to be a hot shot and I was just going to like flick this guy off right here. Not with the middle finger, but just flick him off. And I went like this and the catfish fin went straight through my hand. And it was one of those saltwater hardhead catfish and if you know that, you know that they absolutely hurt. Just don't even fool these guys. Don't even get them in the kayak because I had to go to the hospital like 2 in the morning, get them to pull this doggone thing out and pump my hand full of iodine because no joke, these things, can you could lose a hand from it. I know you guys are going to say probably not, but I'm just saying that you actually can because they're that nasty, that inflammation. Anyways, long story. But what I'm saying is when you got a big animal, a big toothy king mackerel, one, never bring him in the kayak facing you because when those teeth come in and point towards you, bad juju because when they start flopping that tail, he's one, going for your crotch or your leg or your foot and if he touches either one of those with those teeth you are done son and you're going to the hospital also lionfish don't put one in your kayak i know some people catch them close enough now that don't put them in your kayak and sharks guys don't try to put a five or six foot black tip or bull shark in your kayak for a cool guy photo because you're probably gonna go to the hospital on that one too. Unless you're an expert. I was probably the only one guy I've seen that can handle a shark like that and that's Rob and his little dingy yellow kayak because that it just takes skill. They'll get you, I promise you. So that catfish story really rose into my number two thing to never do by yourself and y'all gonna laugh at this one but just don't go out there by yourself. All right, okay, so, so let me tell you a story about that one too. Remember like last year when Greg rolled his kayak underneath the Three Mile Bridge, like go. under the hump? Kick. And for y'all that don't know what the Pensacola Three Mile Bridge is, it's three miles long, and the hump is a mile and a half away, and it's the shipping channel. Greg rolled his kayak right there, and his PFD didn't deploy. And for those of you that know about PFDs not deploying, that means you don't float. So if I wouldn't have been there, he one, wouldn't have been able to get in the kayak, two, he would have died of hypothermia and he probably would have just went down and we'd have never seen him again. He lost all his gear and he couldn't get back in the kayak because his clothes got too heavy for him to get back in. So that's really something to think about. Just never do it whether you're just kayak paddling or you're kayak fishing because there's all kinds of stuff that can happen. You can get wrapped up in the line. You can, you can get caught on a bridge piling. You could lose your kayak. Like it could drift away from you. You could... It could fill up with water. You could gig a fish and poke a hole in the side of your kayak. You could get hit by a boater. Hey, snorkelers! Hey, look out! Look at this idiot. Hey! Hey! Dude blew right through the snorkel reef. So on and so forth. I think you get my point, guys. All right, so topic number three. This topic is pylons, current passes, and bridges. All right, guys, bring it in, bring it in. All right, when I'm talking about these, I'm thinking about when you're fishing by the bridge or you're trying to traverse like open water channels, like you're trying to get across there, and, and when you're around passes, remember that you don't have any speed. You're in a kayak, okay? And butters, they got speed. One, if you're by a pylon, odds are he's not gonna see you. He's gonna wake you or hit you. So don't just, 
sit behind a pile and where they can't see you, you gotta have a plan for that. Two, those passes will kill you, okay? Like the Pensacola Pass here, the Destin Pass, so much water gets sucked out those things. The odds of you going out it and be able to come back in it, slim to none. The odds of you going across it, slim to none. The odds of you, green the water like, is. not, if you rolled and got back in the kayak, and surviving pretty slim because there's rocks, big sharks, all kinds of awful, terrible things that can happen to you and storms, if they pop up, you're done, okay? So, just remember those things, just don't go in the pass. When you're in a big shipping channel, remember you're a little dot and that channel is deep, fast, and dark, all right? So, just stay away from those too. The three mile bridge here, we fish in the channel a lot, but technically, I don't think you're supposed to be out there. Is that right, Brent? You're not supposed to be in the channel? Nope. Yeah, not supposed to fish in the channel because those big boats, if a barge goes past you, he's pushing so much water, he'll probably s just wake you under. And uh, it's just really no juju. There's nothing out there in the pass you need to get out there for anyways. And if you're cutting across it, if you decide to pass across the, the, the channel and you get in that current, you're going to start doing like this and you're going to start pedaling sideways or paddling sideways. You can't really get out of the way of the boats. It's going to be like playing Frogger, so just try not to do it unless you're really experienced and where's a lot of other people and you've got flags and you've got the proper lighting. It's just not a good idea. Number four, number four. Okay, hooks and waves. I don't think this has been covered. I haven't covered it. And don't make fun of this because this is what happens to an Arctic camouflage cup after it's been in the dishwasher for a year. No juju, but back on topic. Hooks and waves. So if you are trying to come through the break with your kayak and you have the poles behind you and the hooks are still on it, when you come through the break and you're gonna, you're gonna roll your kayak, guys. Like, this is just gonna happen. Like, it's it's one of those things that's just like the matter of time. It's like riding a horse and you're like, you get thrown off. If you've never been thrown off, then you're just not doing it right. So, like, when you come through the break and you've got those poles behind you and you roll, those hooks, odds are, are gonna wind up in your vest, your neck, your ear, your, your shirt, your underwear, something. I'm telling you, it's just, you, you are not gonna win with, with hooks and waves, okay? So I would just take all the hooks off the rods, I would put everything inside your kayak you possibly can, and it'll save you a lot of heartache because, true story, I came in with two king mackerel and like five Spanish mackerel one day and I was overweight and I rolled, lost all the fish, lost all my gear. It was heartbreaking and I got tangled up in the hooks underneath the kayak and if it wouldn't have been in shallow water, I'd have been in for it and I'd have had to cut myself out of the hooks and that would have been impossible because I didn't have a knife on me. That's, you know, just learn from my, just learn from my mistake, guys. I've got lots of mistakes and I'm trying to hear it, be here on camera and, and help you with, so just, just don't do it. All right, guys, my number five thing here, number five, okay, is currents and storms. Okay, Brant over here came up with a good point that storms and currents and kayaks, with kayaks, you don't have enough speed to, to get out, of the, to run away from the storm or to really battle the current. Um, good example is when you're offshore and the current's ripping down the beach, um, you paddling back. One thing with that is the current is gonna sneak up on you and you're not gonna know you're that far down the beach until you look up and you've got two miles to go and the, and the storm is coming. It is gonna take you a while to paddle against the current to get back to your launching point. And you might wind up having to beach it or whatever, the water is gonna get rough, there's gonna be lightning. You just don't have the speed to outrun anything, so you have to be very cognizant of the weather. Just don't go out if you think there's going to be a storm headed there within the next couple hours. Like here in the summer, storms will pop up like right around like one or two in the afternoon and be gone by like three or four and you get a couple hours before sunset. You just gotta be cognizant of those that you're not before the, the summer storm because you're gonna have lightning and it's just gonna be bad. Just don't do it, don't go out there because I've been caught out there in it and I actually hid underneath the three mile bridge for like three hours one day and it was raining and lightning and I was underneath the pilings and I was dry. I actually got to pedal the whole three mile bridge. It was like, actually I did probably like two miles out of the rain. I don't recommend y'all doing that. I'm a renegade. But all right guys, so that's my top five things to never do in a kayak. Hope you like this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment down below with your dumbest thing you've done in a kayak because I get a kick. We'll all get a kick out of sharing our ideas. I'll see you guys later. Oh, Jack's got him. 
Jack's got him. I got him, Jack. Oh, got him. Oh, Jack's oh got one God. on the tree truck. Get him up, dude. Get him off the bottom. <laughs> Holy cow. This is the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> you got him. You got him. You got him. There he is. Oh, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. <laughs> Well, this was my first big tarpon. Uh, he was an epic fight. I was a little bummed that the leader broke right when we got him to the boat, and I didn't get to get a picture with my hand in its face. But there's always next time. I'll catch him again this summer, and uh, we'll see how that fight goes. All right, here was an awesome smoker king I hooked up with, trying to catch a tarpon. Hooked him on a mono leader with a circle hook and uh, put up an awesome fight, made an awesome slab for the smoker, and here he is.